Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a uh, review and wear test of the new-ish uh, Too Faced Peach Foundation. I've had this for, I, I'm such a bad person on gauge of time. Sometimes I say, I'll say, I've had this for two months and I watched a video a year ago when I was using it. Um, that's mom brain, I think. But I feel like I've had this about a month, maybe two months. I did wear this and talk about it briefly in a video that I filmed recently, but I haven't dedicated a full review and wear test to this foundation. So that's what we're going to do today. I hope everyone had a great Christmas. I'm filming this video on December 27th, which is, you know, a couple days after Christmas. So this video will either go up on Sunday of this week or Tuesday of next week. So this is like the first full week where I haven't had any videos go up. Uh, you might have seen a comment that I posted on YouTube. I just discovered that you could comment and make posts on YouTube. But I mentioned that I was going to take this week off just because I needed to disconnect. I had so much going on with the holidays, like I'm sure all of you do. And I was just so stressed with trying to find time to film and edit and I didn't want to be stressed and anxious during this time. I really wanted to just, you know, be available to my children and be in the moment and connected and not stressed about all the things that I needed to do. So I said, you know what, I'm taking a full week off and um, I'm glad that I did. I really needed this time. But anyway, I don't want this video to be 30 minutes long, so I'm going to go ahead and get started with the review. All right, so here's what the foundation looks like. It comes in a squeeze tube. It does have a pump, which is really nice. Um, I'm going to read you what it says on the Sephora website just so I don't miss any of the key benefits. So you do get 1.6 fluid ounces in this foundation. It retails for $36. So not outrageously expensive, especially because you do get quite a bit. 1.6 fluid ounces is a little bit more than the standard one ounce that you see often in foundations. I have the shade Light Beige. When I filmed that video before that I used this foundation, I had a different shade and I forget and I forget which one it was, but it was a little too dark. So I went back and exchanged it for the light beige, and I think that this one is a good match. Details of this foundation. It is described to have a medium coverage. I personally think it has a little bit better than, a little more full coverage than medium. It says that it's great for sensitive, normal, dry combination, and oily skin, so pretty much all skin types. And it has a matte finish. It also says it's a 14-hour wear, comfortable matte foundation for a flawless-looking complexion. This transfer resistant oil controlling foundation creates a smooth canvas for comfortable wear using exclusive comfort matte technology that is never cakey or mask like. It smooths the look and feel of skin. It lasts up to 14 hours. It's an oil free formula and it smells like peaches and sweet fig cream. So that's how it's described on Sephora's site. I don't have anything on my skin right now. I have a little concealer and I have some eyebrows. But other than that, I don't have anything on my face. As far as prepping my skin, I did prep my skin with, um, let me show you actually. I think I'm gonna do a separate video this morning um, to talk about these two products because these are two new skincare products that I've been using. The B Hydra Intensive Hydration Gel from Drunk Elephant and the um, basically the Tinted Sunscreen in SPF of 30. So this is all that I have on my skin today. Uh, I don't have a primer on, I'm not gonna use a primer. I've been using this foundation for a while and I find that I don't really feel like I need a primer with it. Um, I'm going to apply it two ways. I'm going to do the beauty blender on one side, I'll do that on the right side, and then I'll do the brush on the left side. Okay, so let's start with the beauty blender. I'm going to do one good pump. This is how the foundation comes out. You can see that it is starting to run down my hand, which tells me that it's not a really, really thick consistency of product. Um, it's not super watery, but it's kind of somewhere in between the two. It's actually not as thick as I, it, it's not as thick as I expected for a more full coverage foundation. And I'm just going to dip my beauty blender the tip of it. And I'm going to start in the center of my face because that's all. I, I say this every time. So if you watch all my videos, you're probably like, yeah, yeah, Lisa, we got it. But if this is your first time to watch my video, that's why I like to say these things over and over again. But I always start in the center of my face because that's where we tend to have the most blemishes, discoloration. Basically, the area that we need the most coverage is in the center of the face. And then as we get out to the perimeter of the face, we want to have less product for a couple reasons. One, we don't really need it. And two, uh, you don't want to have that line of foundation that's not blended. So I always start in the center of my face and then work my way out. Okay. I do find when I use my beauty blender that I use more product than I probably need. And the application is a little more sheer. I shouldn't use the word sheer because this foundation is not a sheer foundation but it doesn't offer as much coverage as if I, I use my brush. I can achieve full coverage with a beauty blender. You just have to use more product. So that might be something to consider. If you are someone that likes to start off more natural looking and then build 
more coverage where you need it, then a beauty blender might be the perfect way for you to apply this. If you're someone that knows right off the bat, I want a lot of coverage and I don't want to use more product than I need, then you might want to consider using a brush, which I'm going to do on the left side so you can see. I don't know why I didn't run out to get this foundation when it launched. I kind of waited a little while. Uh, I really need to be better about that, especially since I'm going to be going full time with YouTube. I really need to be on the forefront of new product launches and get my videos out quickly on my reviews because that's what a smart <laughs> business minded YouTuber would do, but it's just not really how I've operated up to this point. Okay, so left side, nothing. I do have a little concealer, keep that in mind, but I have nothing pretty much from here down on my skin. And then this side has concealer and uh, one layer of the foundation applied with a beauty blender. So let me take a look and kind of analyze what I think. So to me, this looks very natural, but my skin looks flawless. It offers great coverage, but it does not look heavy at all. It doesn't feel heavy. It actually looks very, very nice and matte. I don't feel like my skin looks overly dry, but there is really no shine or no glow to this at all. So let's apply it on the other side with the brush. And I did end up using that full pump with on just this side. So, so with the Beauty Blender, it took an entire pump to get my full half of the face covered, my full half of the face, to get half of the face covered. So that's kind of a lot to me. All right, so on this side, we're gonna do one pump. I'm gonna use the Flawless Face, face Brush by e.l.f. I don't know why I have a hard time saying that. I really like this foundation brush a lot. It's tapered to where it's kind of flat on both sides, so it really works as a great foundation brush in my opinion because you can really just go in and stipple that product and build the coverage that you want. Okay, so I'm gonna start in the center again and I'm just gonna press, 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 press right off the bat. I'm seeing a lot more foundation applied on my skin than I did with the Beauty Blender. So I have a feeling that I'm not going to need to use everything that's on my hand just to cover half the face. So basically I like to just press, press, press in the center and then when I get towards the perimeter of my face then I kind of brush it and blend it out. Okay. Yeah, that really covered that entire part of the face. I'm going to grab a little bit more and go on the forehead here. If you're using a brush, you might want to be careful about how much you grab initially because you could grab too much very easily. You could grab more than you need. I find that this foundation does kind of dry pretty quickly, so I don't like to go in and use my finger and apply it all over the face and then go and blend. I really like to just grab what I need, blend that out, and then grab the rest and work that way. Yeah, that dries really fast and it has a pretty matte finish, but it doesn't look overly dry. Right now my skin has shifted from being pretty oily the last few months to actually being really dry. It's because of the seasons. Um, in Texas, like two weeks ago, it was like 78 degrees and then today it's like 37 degrees. So that extreme change in temperature just has sucked the moisture out of my skin and it's extremely dry lately. So I think that this is actually nice testing this foundation on a day like today because I haven't really worn it since it's been since my skin's been a little bit more dry i've been wearing it when my skin was more oily and i loved it because it did really control the oil okay so i've covered that entire side of the face and you can see that i have quite a bit of foundation left so if you're someone that's very concerned with wasting product too quickly then the brush might be the best way for you to go okay so i have all my foundation on i'm going to take a quick peek and kind of explain to you what i'm seeing and then i'm going to go and finish the rest of my makeup and i'll be right back okay so I love the way that my skin looks right now. I remember the first time I wore this foundation, I was pretty blown away, I thought. So when I first put this foundation on, when I purchased it, you know, a month, two months ago, I was really impressed with the way that it looked. It gave a really flawless finish, but it didn't feel heavy and it didn't look heavy. Um, it didn't feel heavy and it didn't look heavy. Sometimes I feel like we compromise getting a full coverage flawless finish with having more of like a lightweight natural looking finish. I feel like it's hard to find something that's a balance of both. I wouldn't say that this is a natural finish, but it does feel very lightweight and it doesn't look heavy. The only reason it looks a little heavier to me is because the coverage is so great that it almost cancels out and covers every blemish where to me that's not natural looking, right? Because I don't really see the blemishes peeking through my skin. But I do love the way this foundation initially applies. I think it's beautiful. It dries really quickly. I don't really feel the need to powder. It doesn't feel sticky or tacky on my skin at all. Um, I'm not going to powder my face today. I'm going to powder under my eyes to set my concealer, but I'm going to keep the rest of the... Uh, I'm not going to powder or set this foundation initially. Um, okay, so let me go do the rest of my makeup and I'll be right back. All right, and we're back. 
so I actually just filmed while I did the rest of my makeup, so that'll be a separate video on this makeup look. I used the Too Faced Original Chocolate Bar Palette to create this look, so you will see that video either before or right after this video. So another product that I'm going to be reviewing for you guys today uh, when I do my check-ins and I'm looking at the foundation and how it's wearing is this eyeliner by Pure Cosmetics. It's called the On Point Liner. I received this from a website that connects like influencers and brands to review products. So basically they send products and then we're required to like give an honest review on it. So that's what I'm going to do when I'm doing check-ins with you guys. Uh, this is the shade down to earth. It's just like a rich chocolate brown. It's a like a pencil, so it's like a you know standard kind of pencil. It's not like a liquid liner or anything. The unique thing about this eyeliner is that it's always sharp. So every time you open it, and I probably shouldn't do it too much because it's going to continue to sharpen it, but every time you open it, it has a little sharpener in the cap, I assume, that sharpens the tip. So you always get like a really nice on point tip, I think hence the name on point. Um, I've been using this for a few weeks and what I like about it is that I can use it on my upper lash line. I do like to create a little bit of a baby wing almost every time that I do my upper uh, eyeliner and because this is more pointed and more precise I can do it. Usually I can't work with a pencil eyeliner because I can't create that nice little wing but this I'm, I'm able to do that. For this look I only used it on my lower lash line so when I do my check-ins today and we're looking at the foundation we're also going to be looking at this eyeliner and how it's wearing. Normally I smoke out my lower lash line with an eyeshadow. For today's makeup I did not do that. I just used this pencil and then I softened it with a brush. So I don't have any powder to set it underneath my eye. So we're going to see if this transfers, if this moves, if it fades. Um, we're going to test that out as well. So enough talking. It is 1044 a.m. I don't know if you can see with the light. 1044 a.m. Um, I'm going to check in with you guys like you know how this goes every few hours. I'll probably check in with you um, two to three times today and then we will give a final conclusion on how the makeup is wearing at the end of the day. All right, you guys, I will see you in a bit. Bye. Hey guys. Okay, it is, let me show you, just so you know. It is 3.04, oops, 3.04 p.m. Oh my gosh, okay, it's three o'clock. Um, I forget what time I put this on. Did I put it on at 10.30? Can't remember, but uh, it's been on for several hours. Remember, I never set it with a powder, so even after, even when I initially applied it, I didn't powder it. I haven't touched up at all since. I just looked in the mirror and it doesn't look like I need to touch up at all. Um, I was kind of really dissecting the way that it looks right now and I think it looks good. This me this camera, I'm just gonna be honest with you guys, I think it has a skin smoothing feature to it uh, just automatically because every time I look at footage on this camera, I feel like my skin looks a little bit better than it does on my other camera or than when I'm looking in the mirror. So I just wanna kind of preface that. Uh, but I did look in the mirror just now and my skin it looks good I think I prefer this foundation I don't have any complaints honestly if I were just going out for the day I would think my makeup looks great but honestly if I weren't doing a foundation review and trying to like give you guys all the facts I would be happy with the way that it looks I think it looks great uh, but if I am going to get picky and really dissect what is happening right now on my face uh, it does to me look a little dry especially around the nose when I kind of squinch my face a little bit, uh, it does tend to uh, magnify any texture that I have on my skin. Not bad, but I do think that uh, at this point I prefer it on days that my skin's a little bit more oily or the climate is not so dry. It's like 38 degrees outside right now in Austin and it's really dry and cold for us. So my skin is just really paying the price. It's really dehydrated, really dry. Uh, so I don't know that this is a foundation that I, I'm going to love during days like this. Um, but as far as long wearing, it looks great. It hasn't faded. It's not transferring at all. Um, I haven't touched up. I haven't felt the need to touch up at all so um, I'm gonna give it that but again just to really dissect the way that this looks I'm gonna tell you that around my nose and kind of I don't know if you can see but when I kind of do this with my skin it just tends to it just doesn't look healthy it doesn't look good it looks kind of dull and dry so I'm just gonna give you that disclaimer but otherwise I think it looks great again that's just me laying all the facts out for you we're actually gonna go outside and ride bikes for a little bit they got bikes for Christmas and they really want to go out so we're gonna bundle up go outside and then I will check back in with you guys probably after dinner time and let you know how we are looking okay bye okay I'm powering back on because I realized I forgot to check in on the eyeliner for you guys and I did want to kind of give a little progress report on that 
So looking in, it still looks pretty good. I do feel like it kind of has faded right in the inner corner where I applied it. Again, I didn't apply too much there. I started on the outer corner and then I kind of used my brush to uh, smudge it inward. So in those areas, it seems to have faded a little bit. I see a little bit of transfer here, but not much. I don't know if you can even tell. Uh, it's not something that would bother me or something that I would feel the need to clean up if I weren't doing this review and checking in on it. Um, so I just want to kind of give you that little disclaimer. Let's see how it wears throughout the rest of the day, but so far so good. I think it's done a, a pretty good job so far. So, um, again, I'm going to check back in with you guys probably in about four to five hours and see how we are looking on the foundation and the liner. Hey guys, it's about 9.30 PM. So I have had the foundation on all day. I just looked in the mirror and I, I, cannot believe how my makeup looks right now. I have not touched my makeup since this morning when I first applied it, which if I remember it was around 10 o'clock, 10.30 in the morning. I haven't touched it, I haven't powdered, I haven't touched up my eyeshadow. The only thing I've touched up is my lips. I just put some gloss on. It's incredible to me how quickly our skin can change. I mean, I feel like a month ago I was complaining about how oily my skin was and now it is so dry. Um, it's just crazy. I feel like I have a completely different skin type today than I did about a month or six weeks ago. Um, I gotta say, I <laughs> like when the weather is cold and dry and my skin is a little dry just for the sake of my makeup doesn't need to be touched and it still looks like fresh. I mean, I'm not even talking about the foundation. I feel like my eyeshadow still looks amazing. I haven't touched it. It's hasn't creased. I'm kind of bragging on myself. I don't mean to do that. But um, anyway, let's talk about the foundation. So, I mean, it looks pretty good. I have my ring light on right now so you can see, but um, it looks really good. The only negative or the only complaint that I could give it right now is around my nose. It is kind of like patching up on the dry areas. It is kind of like building up in the little dry area and it does look a little dry and flaky around my nose. When I kind of make expressions, you can, it does kind of look a little drying on the skin, but I mean, I mean, I really, but really that's kind of me just looking for a negative in this. I really think that this foundation is phenomenal in terms of like wearability. Um, even when I did have oily skin, I felt like it wore really, really well. It didn't look this mattifying after 10 hours or 11 hours or wherever we're at right now, but it still needed very little touch up. So, um, this is definitely a great foundation for long wear, for full coverage. I think that if you have oily skin, you should definitely give this a try if you're looking for a foundation that hits all those marks. The only um, skin type that I would say might not love this is someone that has really, really dry, dehydrated skin. Um, I mean, I say that and my skin right now is pretty dry and I still think it looks great, but if you have severe, dry, flaky, chapped skin, then you probably are gonna want something more hydrating than this. Uh, but I gotta say, you guys, I am, pretty impressed with how my makeup looks right now. I, I really can't believe that it looks the way that it does uh, without touching up. So eyeliner, okay, I'm glad I didn't forget about that this time. Um, okay, so, so it did transfer a little bit, not much though, and it really hasn't seemed to change at all since my last check-in, which was, what time was that? Like 2.30 or three o'clock, somewhere around there. It really hasn't changed at all since then. Uh, it has transferred a tiny bit more in that area that it was starting to at my first check-in, but it hasn't faded and it really hasn't transferred much. So I have to say that this liner is a pretty good eyeliner pencil for the lower lash line. It's stayed on all day today. It hasn't faded, it hasn't transferred. Um, yeah, so if you're looking for a good eyeliner pencil um, and you haven't tried those, it's by Pure Cosmetics. Uh, I'll have it all linked down below, but check those out. Uh, yeah, so I think that's all I got for you guys. I am gonna go downstairs, wash my face, and get ready for bed. Um, I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.